All right, trendsetter. It is elimination chamber time this Saturday. So what do you what do we have? We got a preview show for you guys. And joining us now is King Coley. You can follow him on IG at King Coley. What's up, man? How you doing, dude? You excited for elimination chamber? What's up? What's up? Talk to me, baby. I can't wait. Like I said, I'm always excited about the pay per views, even though some matches are stinker. But we're gonna talk about it. I can't wait. <laughs> all right, dude. I am Jeff Martin alongside the trend You can follow us on all our social media at High Spot Podcast. Here we, we're doing something a little different here because we want to get the fans' perspective and 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 their thoughts on these pay per views. So we're starting off here with the Elimination Chamber. It starts on Saturday at noon. First and foremost, dude. Before we get into the match card, just tell us a little, a little bit about yourself so the uh, audience can get to know you better. Hey, I'm King Coley. Everybody know me that follow me. I'm the creator of Title Tuesday. As you can see behind me and everybody's watching, I love my titles. Uh, started Title Tuesday back in 2020 during the pandemic, and it took off. And big, huge wrestling fan. I love the merch. <laughs> like Favorite wrestler of all time is Macho Man Randy Savage. If y'all can see and y'all can tell. Oh, yeah, dig it. But, uh, yeah, like I said, just a big fan. I've always been a fan all my life. Never fell out of it. And, yeah, King Cole, follow me. Have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. So, um, listen, but again, also to here, uh, I mean, we're just fans talking about it. And again, we're, we always try to be from the narrative of, hey, listen, man, just watch it. Be a fan. It's, you know, it, there's so many people that are going to talk down about uh, talk down about the pay-per-view and talk about, you know, Saudi Arabia, how, you know. You're gonna hear all that stuff about WWE's blood money and stuff like that. But hey, listen, man, that, that it I, I think it's hard when you talk about being a business and is and if you're not in it, you don't know like the the back workings of how stuff like this is done. And yes, while while you can argue that you know Saudi Arabia is 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 not a good look for WWE right now, you know, there's a there's a there's a lot of women's matches yeah. on this card, dude. So at least that's one thing that's positive, right? What do you think about that whole Saudi Arabian uh, narrative? I was saying, like, like I was saying, it's a whole big breakthrough. Like I said, I love that the women matches is coming through and everything and it's showing a different dynamic of everything. And they giving a big, give, uh, getting a good perspective of women wrestling over there. Uh, as far as everything goes, it's funny because we was talking about this the other day. I was just like, I'm glad, happy they could br uh, br branch out out there so people can see it because it is, people out there that love wrestling just like we do and like i said hopefully it just keeps growing i know it's a very a lot of controversy around it but entertainment could bring people together you feel me so that's the way i look at everything <laughs> well if we look at the elimination chamber right it's the last event before wrestlemania honestly and, and the build-up going into it do you feel looking at it i mean you said yourself right when you're talking about this and you're excited about it there can be a couple stinkers out there we can talk about that in a little bit but what are the one the main ones that you're looking forward to if you have to name it let's say a top three match you want to see that will lead into wrestlemania for you and the excitement that builds up to the anticipation of what's going to happen then uh, the only thing i can sit here and really talk about well i ain't gonna say that's the only thing but i just want to see if brock going to win it and see how he gonna win what kind of dramatic form is he gonna win is he gonna dominate everything or is he probably not win that's one. And then two, I want to see how they're going to sit here and see how Ronda Rousey, I want to see how she is with her layoff off. So I want to see how good she's going to wrestle and in any way they could develop that into a better storyline because I wasn't, me personally, I wasn't too happy about her choosing Charlotte. And then I want to see how long this Brock and Goldberg match. I said 10 minutes. It could be quicker than that. <laughs> Curious how, how that's going to be. <laughs> Yeah, we'll find out if Goldberg, if uh, Roman Reigns is going to Goldberg, Goldberg uh, on Saturday. So you talk about Ronda Rousey. Of course, she's back. Uh, a lot of people had their thoughts, mixed feelings, I guess, about her, uh, you know, coming back at the Rumble, winning it. But, you know, she's there. She picked Charlotte. Uh, and that's what we're going to get at WrestleMania. But now you got, I guess you got like a tune-up match here with her and Naomi team up against Charlotte and Sonya Deville. One of the three women's matches that are on this card. So, you know, let's get right to it here. Uh, listen, uh, Sonia Deville really has a lot of history with Naomi. They've really played that storyline out. Uh, Charlotte now and Ronda Rousey, you know that's your matchup for uh, WrestleMania. Just quick thoughts here on this tag team matchup here in Saudi on Saturday. Uh, me personally, I had liked the match, if y'all saw it on last Friday, between Naomi and Charlotte. That was a pretty good match. I was very interested and very invested in it. Heck of a match. It was one hell of a match. And like I said, Naomi could go. I, like, I just always knock on her that she can't really talk on the mic. But everything else, she's athletic and she's good and she can carry a good match. She's entertaining. But uh, 
like I said, I want to see what she could do. I really want this Sonya Deville and uh, Naomi thing to be dead. Like I said, like you said, it, it went through the ground already. Because like and most people get put over after like the authority figure is uh, dominating them or being being down on them, but they ain't really overcome anything. But uh, like I said, I want to see how good that like this year layoff with Ronda give her some tune-up matches. Hopefully, build more storyline into it with Charlotte and everything to get more people involved and get people behind it. Like I said, we ain't got no choice but to deal with it. So all we could do is just get invested the best way we can with it. So I, that, that's my take on it. And Trent said, agree with me, not here, but do you think that we talked off, off camera on this about Naomi and how easily she, if she would have perhaps been a part of the bloodline storyline, how she could easily have become a very, very uh, top, Five top six female, you know, in the company right now, just having herself align with the bloodline, having her become that woman's champion, you would have had a made star right there. You think, guys, that WWE kind of dropped the ball ball by not having her uh, as part of the bloodline angle? Well, I wouldn't say drop the ball in terms of that. I mean, l- let's be honest. With a lot of things, hindsight's twenty twenty. What they could have done, right? Naomi, perfect example. We what we just heard, right? Like, yeah, she can go in the ring. There's never been a question about what she can do in the ring collectively from an athletic standpoint to going to the top tier facing someone like Charlotte. The thing is, are you emotionally invested in her? And the only way you become emotionally invested in somebody is when you know, they can talk to you on the microphone that you can actually feel what they're feeling. This whole Sonya Deville storyline has been played out so long that I'm not emotionally invested, nor do I care what happens, which we know eventually it's going to lead to another match at WrestleMania. That's what seems the direction it's going into. I don't know basically what more they can do in terms of she's been getting opportunities. You know what you can do. Are you going to give her the right platform? I don't, I don't know. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. But like I said, like I, I was a big fan of her probably joining her business back in the day, like with the bloodline. Like I said, it was cool. It could have went with that, but I really didn't want to see it, but I did at the same time. I was a tweener on that with the bloodline because it's like, okay, they're going to sit here and put her over with like with everybody else. It would have been good for her to have a mouthpiece in Paul Heyman. Like I said, because like I said, she can't talk. But like I said, like, see, because that's just why I said the women's division need a mid card title. <laughs> <laughs> more titles. That's always the answer there, uh, King Coley. More titles. Just <laughs> more titles to put on your wall uh, back there. But uh, <laughs> they're not doing nothing with the women tag titles. They need to turn yeah. those. Definitely agree with that. And on that note, guys, what are your thoughts here on this uh, tag team match in Saudi Arabia? Uh, Charlotte Flair, Sonya Deville against Naomi and Ronda Rousey. Your thoughts? Uh, we'll start with King Coley. Your thoughts? Who wins this match? Uh, I feel that the good guys is going to prevail. Naomi and Ronda will win in some dramatic, dramatic form. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this tag match, I mean, you know, one thing we know about Vince, he doesn't like tag team wrestling that much. And when you look at this match, it's basically just a carryover to get us to WrestleMania. So, honestly, yeah, you're going to have Ronda and uh, Naomi win this one. There's no doubt about that. Well, I got a spoiler spoiler alert for you guys. I totally think that uh, Ronda and Naomi are winning, but I can guarantee you that Charlotte ain't taking eight ain't taking the pin how about that i can t- i can tell you she's <laughs> a safe bet right there you want to look you want to make it look strong going into mania i get it now uh all right guys so we're talking about i don't know if it's a lackluster rivalry but i just think that the whole drew mcintyre scenario heading into mania i just think he just lost a lot of steam i know he was injured he came back uh and now he's got this rivalry with mad cat moss and baron corbin which no, it's happy Corbin. Don't oh, happy get Corbin. Wrong. Happy Corbin. We, yeah, happy, happy Corbin. And, well, Joe, I got to stop you right there. Guys, how much did we love Corbin when he was miserable? Oh. How much more entertaining was he when he was miserable, had the mustard stains on his shirt, <laughs> had his hair growing out, had the, you know, the 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 the, the lack of hair on the, on the side, horseshoe pattern thing? How funny was that? Are you disappointed it didn't go any further than that? I am. Pretty personally, and I've always been a Baron Corbin guy, and I keep saying that he could work with any character that he has, but he really showed his reach with that with that down <laughs> Corbin with the whole Coda set girl. <laughs> like it was just it was amazing. It was yeah. amazing. It was amazing. It was good. They should have like they should have kept that going at least for another two uh, a month or two to like really didn't show his game, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I totally think we could have had a few more weeks of uh of bad luck Corbin, man. He was doing some of his best work, but 
back to Drew McIntyre here, kind of a, a lackluster rivalry with Happy Corbin and Matt Cap Moss. And you're going to see a, a Falls Count Anywhere match between Matt Cap and uh, Drew McIntyre, which, guys, we, we agree this is going to be uh, probably a match of WrestleMania between, you know, uh, Corbin and McIntyre. So in this matchup, though, Falls Count Anywhere, are we going to get, uh, I guess, a built up Drew McIntyre heading into Mania with a win over Matt Cap Moss? Absolutely. <laughs> Like, I, like, I'm notorious for saying it. Like, if y'all ever tune in on my stuff, I always say, it, say it's a bathroom match. It's my bathroom break match. This is probably going to be my <laughs> break match because I know Drew McIntyre is going to win. Was this, this is the second time you're going against Madcap in a pay-per-view. And I was like, okay, we, we know Drew is not going to lose this match unless Baron Corbin interferes, interjects. But they're not going to have Drew look weak into this. So I'm going with Drew McIntyre with this. Yeah, I don't know if I want to go in the bathrooms in Saudi Arabia, but uh, <laughs> maybe it's maybe something I'm on my phone or not paying attention to this match particularly. Uh, all due respect there, but uh, no, you're right. I mean, it, it's amazing. We go back to the scenario of so much momentum going in for Drew McIntyre, going into eliminating Brock at at the Royal Rumble. It's going to be a Brock-McIntyre uh, match. The pandemic hit, kind of just killed all his momentum. I really feel like this is just more of kind of here, here you're on the card. You know, storyline nobody really cares about. There's no really investment in it. Let's just have you go strong to WrestleMania and then beat Corbin as the payoff. And and, and really, that's what it feels like to me. So, yeah, McIntyre is going to win this one. And it's going to lead to Corbin and McIntyre, which, uh, again, we, you know, King said and you said, too, right? it's kind of a lot of a lackluster to a certain degree elimination chamber in terms of storylines you're not really invested in. They're just matches with no direction whatsoever. I think that's what's going to happen leading into Mania. So this is one of them. You know, and since there's not a lot, again, this is not rocket science here. Our predictions, it's it's pretty yeah. obvious here that Drew's going to win. But I want to go back. Well, to, not rocket science, but it's logic. But logic doesn't really exist in pro wrestling nowadays. I, I guess, but this is pretty. This is pretty damn close to being like 100 percent here because it just making sense. It should be Drew McIntyre. But I want to go back, guys, and talk to you about just how much not having that audience because of the pandemic hurt Drew because he did not have his WrestleMania moment. It would, I think his whole reign would have been a lot different had he had that Mania moment in front of 60,000 people in Tampa and having fans there. I think it would have been a much more memorable and a much better title reign. Who knows? He's maybe champion still. Things might be different, but that pandemic really, really hurt uh, his title run, guys. It really did. He did big time, but the fact is, I uh, I have this argument a lot. I can't sit here and say that he did bad doing that because I really enjoyed it. It's just the fact that it's the lack of competitors that he went. He went how many times did he go against Brandy Orton? Like six times. <laughs> like that's the only person he kept fighting. Then he fought Seth, and that's all. Like like I think he could have, like I said, he could have for sure benefited with the audience, but also if more wrestlers was wrestling, he probably could have had better. Thing too as well, but like he did it, he did the best he could in a bad situation last year. Now he did. It's all about timing, right? In this business, it's about you know things working out and having perfect timing, everything working in alignment. In this case, just nothing was working because, as King said, right, Jeff, you had uh, limited, no fans at all in the building, and then you had limited roster too because a lot of majority of the roster went away and were just kind of in isolation because they didn't want to work. So you had to do the best of what you could, and and unfortunately. Uh, that wouldn't have uh, that was the case of what happened. It would have been nice to see because at least if it had failed, it would have failed of them trying everything they could to get him over. But at that point at the Royal Rumble, when he eliminated Brock Lesnar, I mean, the guy was completely over. The, the crowd was screaming when he eliminated Roman Reigns at that time, which everybody hated Roman. Now, obviously, he's the, the tribal chief. Yeah. What, what a moment, what an opportunity. But again, unfortunately, things you couldn't control ended up happening to be the demise of Drew McIntyre's title run. Yeah, yeah absolutely devastating and how things could have been different had there been more had there been fans and no pandemic but we'll see how his 22 will look down the road so now we got we talked about the blow line before and and probably one of the best tag teams in the world right now the usos and here's another one guys i'm thinking to myself how the hell are you gonna believe that the viking raiders are gonna go in and defeat the usos i just don't see it i mean i just see this as a as, as a match that you would see on SmackDown, right? Another match that you probably just to fill the card here. There's absolutely no way. And I'll just start off right here. It's short and sweet. There's no way in hell, no chance in hell that the Usos are, are losing Saturday. Let, there you go. Let, let, me, let me start right here. Yes, there's no way the Usos are losing to the Viking Raiders. The Viking Raiders has absolutely no chance in hell, to coin a phrase from Vince McMahon, of winning this match. But if War Machine showed up, Oh, yeah. then they would have a chance because at the same time, from what the Viking Raiders were in Ring of Honor to what they were progressed here, 
complete shell of what they're supposed to be. But this goes back to my argument too, Jeff and King, if you agree with me here, that you know, ever since I can remember, you know, growing up, I loved tag team wrestling. I feel that's the best way to develop a new star. And now, as you've seen with the titles, they're on different brands. You have the Usos. How many times are the Usos going to be 35-time world champion, tag team champions? <laughs> I don't know. That's a possibility. It just doesn't seem right now that the tag team division is a main focal point in the WWE right now. Facts. I agree with everything you're saying. I'm the same way. I love tag team wrestling. Heart Foundation, Legion of Doom, Dudley Boys, Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, the Hardys. Uh, everything. It goes back to that. They don't care. Like Vince doesn't care about tag team wrestling. We know that. The fact is, is like, yeah, the Viking Raiders doesn't have a chance. Even I even go to the, the War Raiders probably had a better chance than, than the Viking Raiders right now. Like this could be something. Like, this could be something good. Could have a big, a very good big build up to this and had better storyline. But the fact is, they just what they jumped on the Viking Raiders twice and spoke at commentary. Like it was, it's it's a big, terrible build up. Terrible build up for a tag team that I really like. I like your point there, you know, I can't because if you look to your right shoulder, there's several versions of the Intercontinental title there, too. And talk about another title that has no significance behind it as well. I mean, we're talking about the tag team titles. The Intercontinental oh. Championship was something of prestige. Can they be back to that form again? I think it could, but it depends on the commitment of wanting to do that. And that's another disappointment, too, in the fact that here we are talking about Elimination Chamber, guys, right? We're talking about the WWE Championship and the Universal title possibly being on the line both at WrestleMania. What else is left for that roster there? If you had the same significant importance for the United States Championship and the Intercontinental Championship, then you would have a, a better scenario going into Elimination Chamber. It's just, I don't know, guys. I, what do you do from this point? The, the tag team titles, Usos, Vi uh, uh, Viking Raiders, War Machine, whatever you want to call them, War Raiders. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like any of these other storylines, correct me if I'm wrong, they have worked on. I feel like they've just been pasted in together last minute for a, a card filler, basically. It's terrible. And I agree with you once again with that. Me, personally, I'm a big fan of the workers' title, the Intercontinental Championship. So the fact is, Shinsuke Nakamura, even though we know the spoiler for this week coming up, I don't know if y'all seen it, but I've seen the spoiler for this week. But Shinsuke Nakamura haven't defended this title since September 10th. He defended the title September 10th. We in February now? Where's the this title? The U.S. title as well. U.S. title what, got, got defended 10 times. I just watched the match just now with uh, him and a D Damian Priest and AJ just now, and I wasn't happy with the outcome, but that's either here or there. But these titles was also to bring people along, develop new talent, have good storylines. We already know nine times out of 10 at WrestleMania, like they always do. They have like the six-man ladder match like they always do for the Intercontinental title or the U.S. title. They always do that. So we see hopefully they could develop a good storyline to get these titles back on track. Cause like I said, so many, so much young talent out there that need to help propel these people to the next level. And I totally agree. Uh, I'm a huge intercontinental title fan. Uh, I just, it, to me, we, we grew up on it as being the workman's uh, title, right? There you go. Uh, on key right there. He's pulling your, the, the belt right there. <laughs> the U S title. The U.S. title. So those U.S. titles, the secondary titles, are always the 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 guy with the, with the work rate who's the next in line. And a long time ago, that tradition just fell by the wayside, guys. And here's here's something that I'm seeing here. We know Sammy. Listen, we know Sammy Zayn is going to defeat Shinsuke Nakamura for that for the Intercontinental title. But the worst part is, I see everybody once they found out saying, "Oh, there's no way the IC title can." could lose more of your reputation well you know what guys it is going to because this is leading up to no doubt Sami Zayn putting the title on the line against Johnny Knoxville at Wrestlemania and I, I, I have the impression that Johnny Knoxville is walking away the IC champion and it's just going to be a kick in the gut to us fans that hold that title in such prestige and know that WWE doesn't really you know, care about the titles, wait till WrestleMania, because guys, I really think that's really uh, all likelihood going to happen. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind. That's what's going to happen. I mean, I mean it's, it, it'd probably be the equivalent, maybe not so much of David Arquette winning the world championship, but here's the thing too. Listen, we, we're all diehard hardcore fans. We've loved wrestling ever since growing up as a kid. Like King said, never grew out of it. Right. We also have to see it from this perspective as well. If they're not going to, use the ch the championship the way we want to right in terms of being the workman's title you know back in the w wcw days the u.s title was the equivalent of the intercontinental championship it was for the next guy in line yeah. the next guy was going to be the next top star basically it's how they used it to build and the tag team championships were used to a certain degree to find out 
not only the best team was, but who was going to be, at least in my opinion, that next breakout star that could move and position himself in a singles career for that individual secondary title, as we call it. But from a business standpoint, would it make sense that as though we might not like the fact that John Knox will walk out of WrestleMania in Dallas, the Air Count Champion, if that storyline progresses as Jeff predicted and is kind of assuming it's going to happen and foreshadowing, would it be bad or bring more attention to WWE? I mean, isn't that the ultimate goal here? WWE wants to just bring more attention to it. So if they're using the Intercontinental Championship as a prop, is it still successful or no? <laughs> as a <laughs> wrestling fan, no. But like you do make a good point, compelling point. Like I said, you do you do want to bring more audience to there. Like everybody said, like everybody want to tune in, especially around WrestleMania time, where all the casual fans come in. You're absolutely right with that. But the fact is, it's just like. Just like with the part timers, just like with Ronda and Brock, I feel the same way. It's just like you let you let these part timers come in and then still a shine for all these people that really worked hard. But like I said, that's a great point what you said, and I do agree with that. You do need to have we do want more audience come in because everybody's going to tune in to see what Johnny Knoxville does if he does come. So, is Brock a part timer now? Is he considered a part timer? Because I've seen him more this run more on TV than he's ever been in his his four years combined with the company. Yeah. Right, like, like I was sitting over here arguing this too. Was like, yeah, is like, is he a part timer? As far as wrestling wise, yeah and no. But he's just a main attraction. But yeah, he's not wrestling. But he is there more. Like he was there tonight as well. And this is the best Brock gimmick ever. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Oh, we'll get, we'll it's get awesome. to that. We'll get it's to awesome. that in, in in a bit. But yeah, awesome Brock right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, like I said, just like like I said, the whole part timer thing. Like I said, like Brock. Like I said, we could sit here and question that and everything, but. Like say like with these people that have been here, been putting in the work. Like me personally, like like with the whole Ronda thing, I'm, I know I'm going a little bit off course. Like I was I was one of the people that was upset that she was there, like that she won, because I heard her music. Because I was there at the Royal Rumble live when I heard her music go on. I was like, oh, I know who's about to win. Because I was very upset that Sasha Banks didn't win. I'm a big Sasha fan, so I was like, oh man. <laughs> and then Sasha isn't even on his card at, at like at the elimination. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, too, wondering what her position will be at WrestleMania as well, too, because you, you can't kind of leave her off that card. We'll get we'll get to that in a, uh, in a little bit, though. But to finish up this card here and, and talking about the Elimination Chamber is at noon on Saturday on Peacock TV. Uh, again, guys, uh, those Saturday pay-per-views starting to grow on me. I don't know about noon, but I guess I, I know why they got to do that, too, with the time difference. But running down the card here, uh, of course, with uh, King Coley, man, thanks for your time here. Appreciate you dropping some knowledge with us here for the Elimination uh, Chamber Not preview knowledge, show. some passion. You oh, know, it's like, a fandom, man. You this can is, tell. His... This is the greatest time in, and I can remember, and, and I'm going all the way back dating myself to the Monday Night Wars where – Jeff and I were recording one on VHS and one VCR. Oh, geez, VCR, yeah. look it up, Google what a VCR is, guys. And the other one watching uh, Nitro and taping both simultaneously at the same time. And then there were commercials flipping back and forth. Now with the internet and everything we have available to us, dude, what a, an amazing time to be a wrestling fan. Yes, and I say that all the time. I Like like we said in the beginning, a lot of people sitting over here complaining about this stuff. It's so much options now. Go watch something else. Stop complaining. Enjoy it. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan. AW, WWE, Impact, NWA. You got so much stuff. New Japan still. It is so much stuff to watch. Now people hopping shows, opening a forbidden door. It's just such great. I love it. I'm loving it right now. It's fun. <laughs> like wrestling is wrestling. <laughs> that door's open, man. It, it, it's wide open. It, it is a fun time, dude. And obviously, especially this time period, because you're on that road to WrestleMania. Everything is going on. And everyone converges in Texas. Uh, all these shows that you're going to see, man. It's crazy, the lineup that, you, that you're going to get there. Independent shows are going to be running there. WrestleCon, all that good stuff, man, is, is going to be there uh, in Dallas, Texas. So looking forward to that. The, this is the final show before Mania. Then the anticipation builds even more and more. All right, so... We're talking about the you know, that weekend song stuck in my head right now. Oh, and let me tell you, so, see, we're, we're we're getting on the weekend should be a Hall of Famer as far as the music <laughs> business because his last th two songs have not have are still play in my head, man. They're that, they're that good and they go along with the theme. So obviously, the weekend should be a W Hall of Famer as far as the uh, artist category. But um, I did three songs, right? Well, yeah, yeah Blinding Lights, I think. Uh, Save your tears in this one. So it's yeah, three. It's so it's three. three. Yeah. Um, so first the women's elimination chamber, dude. Who is going to be that sixth woman, man? I 
it, I, I think it's, you can narrow it down to two. But is it worth bringing Bailey or Asuka back at Elimination Chamber? I think it's a Lundra Blaze. Oh, a Lundra Blaze? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> like, Ivory, King maybe? Laughing. Ivory? That was fun at the Rumble. What, what are your thoughts? Who's going to be the sixth woman there, King Coley? I sit here, and I said that 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 annoying song is going to end up playing. That. Bum, bum. <laughs> like Lacey Evans. I feel Lacey Evans. Is oh. Good. I feel that she's going to pop up. She's she, she been showing a lot of videos of her working out and getting ready, this, that, and the third. Like I said, and it's not, like I said, it's, I can say I said it's a lackluster return, but it's not big enough to take the shine from the people that's going to be there. My personal pick, I feel Bianca's going to win and go to WrestleMania against uh, uh, Becky. So that's the main reason I was like, okay, because if you put Bailey in there or Oscar in that, in that point, it's like that's going to be a key person that want to yeah. go. The WrestleMania, like people are gonna be a fan to go for them to go over there. So I feel that it'd probably be some like somewhat like like Les Lacey Evans returning, or maybe Alexa Bliss because this little storyline going on too that she keep going to therapy. I'm curious where they're gonna go with that. And most definitely, that's a great point, Lacey Evans, who did compete in Saudi Arabia or against uh, Natty uh, against Natalia. So that's a great point. I did not think Lacey Evans that that probably is going to be that person, but I don't think it's going to matter though, because I, I am down with uh, King Coley's pick. I think Bianca Belair is going to win and we're going to see uh, Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. And for those that whine and complain and bitched about SummerSlam, I think it's going to be Bianca Belair's uh, time at mania, but I do think Bianca Belair is going to walk away uh as the winner of the uh, Women's Elimination Chamber match. Trendsetter? Well, I'll tell you guys what I think it's going to be Asuka. I thought oh. it was going to be at the Royal Rumble. I think it was going to be in this scenario. Because here's the thing. We all thought initially it was going to be Ronda and, and Rebecca, right? And, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Becky Lynch. Uh, so we all thought it was going to be that, right? Because of the storyline build of, of what was said personally and, and the build up towards you know the main event that happened in MedLife Stadium that happened actually on a Monday, not a Sunday. But uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there because it was that long of a show. But uh, I think it, it has to be this because the, here's the thing. Bianca had her opportunities, had her moments. I don't I don't feel right now, at least, they're going to position her in that scenario again because I hate to say it, but we've already seen it. We've seen it several times now. Could it be? Yes, it's a possibility. But I think it's Sasha for this particular reason because the last time we saw Becky Lynch and Sasha in the ring together, as Jeff drops his pens. I'm a mess right now, guys. <laughs> the last time we saw them in the ring together, Becky was going to defend the title against Asuka. What ended up happening is Becky Lynch and Seth had a special magical moment together because when two people really love each other, uh, they have a baby. <laughs> so she forfeited the title to Asuka. So we never got to see that match. And I think they'll build up in that storyline the fact that Becky say, will say she's beaten them all, but she hasn't beaten Asuka yet. So I think that will play out in the story. I mean, she probably has beaten Asuka, but in terms of that storyline and go back two years ago and, and play off the fact that she said she's been better than ever since she was pregnant or when she found out she was pregnant and now, but we still have that match that we wanted to see from two years ago. I think they'll build off that storyline. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a great take. And that makes sense, guys. In terms yeah, of I, I could see that. I could definitely see that. But I, I want to say that the trendsetter explanation of Seth and Rollins love making a baby. I think that if you're a dad and your kid is a wrestling fan, that's the best way to explain the birds and the bees right there. When <laughs> when when Becky and Seth, two people love each other and there's then a pandemic, there's, then there's. Oh, don't time for baby making. So, I mean, I mean that is the perfect way to teach your wrestling kid who about the birds and the bees. Use the Seth Rollins and the Becky Lynch their story there. Can call you, but yeah, man, it, it's going to be interesting though. But I, I really do think Bianca. It's her time, and I think all those people that complain at SummerSlam about what you know how Bianca Belair was treated uh, are going to get uh, you know eat their words here because I think uh, this is this is going to be. Uh, Bianca Belair's time heading to WrestleMania. You guys are fools. Like I said, <laughs> that is well. Like I said, it's like it's still been so many like eggs been planted with this story. Like, okay, they had their one on one at Extreme Rules. I was there at Extreme Rules, and that's when Sasha ended up coming and interfered in that match. So it didn't get a clean finish there. Then end up what Becky ended up cheating at the uh with the when they fought on Raw, and then what a few weeks ago when Dewdrop ended up winning, she interfered and made sure Bianca didn't win. So like I said, it's still so many like like eggs that's been planted which ongoing storyline from SummerSlam all the way to WrestleMania. So I said like I, that's why I said it feels it's still like a, a good builder. But also I like what Transitor said. It was it was like it could go like how he did with Oscar. It's like it, it could go multiple ways now since that that she picked Charlotte, that 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 Ronda picked Charlotte. Like it could go so many ways.
I love how you said eggs and Rebecca the same sentence there, too. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah. It could be Sasha, too. Who knows? It could be Sasha. And then we have Sasha and, and Becky and me. That'd be a great match. But, you but, know? Th- but that's one of the intriguing matches for Saturday, that Women's Elimination Chamber. Who is going to be that mystery sixth person and also to who's going to come out? Uh, a lot of ways it can go with it, too. And, and I, I don't know how far Liv Morgan has fallen since uh, she had that opportunity, but I, I don't see anybody – uh, thinking that Liv Morgan can come out with a victory here. But again, we will see uh, great insight here by you guys here on this Women's Elimination Chamber match. Let's go to Goldberg versus Roman Reigns. I got to tell you, man, I at first I didn't think WWE could pull Roman Reigns being one of the greatest of all time or having people actually cheer for Roman Reigns. But this version of Roman Reigns has been absolutely incredible. Uh, it's, it's crazy that it took this while for him to get to this point, but man, he is rocking this. Look at this guy. (laughs) Our tribal chief. Tell us what is your predictions is, is Roman Reigns going to Goldberg Goldberg? Yes. And we will acknowledge. (laughs) (laughs) Goldberg. I told you 10 minutes max in this match. (laughs) It's going to be a spear through the barricade. It's going to be like a couple of spears in the ring. It's going to be over. Superman punch and is out of here. He might even kick out of the jackhammer. I'm scared of Goldberg even trying to pick up Roman because he almost killed the Undertaker. I- ironically, the last time that he was in Saudi. So we got oh. we, we to protect the tribal chief at any at all costs. <laughs> How awesome has this run been, dude? It's been... I've been a person that's always been a fan of Roman. I've been a fan since he came in here. So I'm one of those people that have been riding, riding the whole way. But this this character is phenomenal. It's great. Uh, like, greatest of all time. I still can't sit here and do it. Greatest universal champion of all time? Yeah. But, like, the whole greatest of all time, like, I love this gimmick. I love the way that he can talk. He's showing his personality. Got Paul Hammond to back him up. Hey. He, he's money, baby. He's money. <laughs> yeah, and I've been on this show before, King, and, I, and, I, and Jeff and I have talked about this countless times, especially in the scenarios where all the way back to WrestleMania 31, right, for the fact that he was facing Brock, I think, for the first time for the WWE Championship at that time. I was against Roman. I was so uh, – because I felt WWE had force-fed him down you know, my throat, basically. It's like, eat your vegetables. I don't want Roman Reigns. I don't want to see this type of scenario because – because it didn't seem authentic and real to me. Now, I've never been against Roman Reigns, the individual. You see how he's a hard worker. You see how he's progressed. You see the great matches he's had with certain individuals. So he had all the tools. It just, I felt, at least from the standpoint, prior to this new version of Roman Reigns, the tribal chief, the one, all the stuff, it's um, it's stuff that should have been done a long time ago. But maybe it took the, the scenario for him to go away. After you know the battle with you know he had with leukemia when he got it again and then came back and people were finally cheering him and then you're like how can you boo this guy again reinvents himself and I think has done some of his best work not because oh he found it but he always had it along he was just now allowed to do it for the first time yeah and like like what I said earlier timing is everything what ironically he was supposed to go against Dollar Bill and then he couldn't and then everybody booed him and talked about him for not uh, competing because of his situation because of the COVID thing and it was like a thing so then he ended up coming back as a heel like i said timing was everything ironically somewhat like how the rock was when he got booed out of the stadium and he came back as a heel it was like (laughs) like, so that's what i said it's just timing with everything and it's just perfect like like the royal rumble did that be the year before he that we, the year before he had one, when everybody was cheering him because I guess they didn't want Batista to win, and everybody want was all Roman Reigns. It, would it be different if he would have won that Royal Rumble? Who knows? <laughs> like, but it would have been like I was. I was mainly upset that Batista won. But I was I, out of my seat for Roman that Royal Rumble. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You guys, do you think this is the last match on Goldberg's contract? A lot of people talked about before when he fought the last time in Saudi Arabia, which is the last time he actually wrestled, which was against Bobby Lashley. He looked his best physical condition that I've ever seen him at this stage in his career and had an amazing match with Bobby Lashley. A lot of people said that should be it, that Goldberg should go out on that high because you can't do any better than that. Now he's in this scenario, his final match on his contract. Do you think, depending on the, regardless of the outcome here, I mean, and most of the outcome is going to be Roman winning the title, whatever way he wins it, whether he dominates Goldberg or not. Do you think this is the last time we've seen Goldberg in the ring? No. I'm not even going to sit here and lie. WWE still want to capitalize on his nostalgic and then he doesn't want to hang up his boots. So I think he probably end up, he probably have a, a, a one-off match at Mania 
maybe. Like he's for sure going to. I feel he's going to keep wrestling. <laughs> yeah, don't be shocked if they resign him uh, for another deal. As long as they're in Saudi Arabia, as long as this still do shows over there, he'll always have a contract. I mean, the prince loves nostalgia. Uh, obviously, like we were talking about last time he took on Lash in Saudi, he could still go. We'll see what happens on Saturday, whether it's a you know three minute squash match or they give him a little bit of offense and it you know last five ten minutes. But I think as long as they do those shows in Saudi, there's still value to Goldberg. And he still gets a pop, dude. He still gets a pop when he walks out to the ring. And so that's all you need him for, man. Five, ten minutes, whether it's, you know, squash someone or you get squashed. We'll find out. But I think that I wouldn't be surprised. So if, if, he, gets, if he gets squashed, I want to ask you guys this. If he gets squashed, does he have more value? Forget the whole nostalgia thing. We get what Goldberg's history is and stuff like that. If, you, if there's, they keep doing shows in Saudi Arabia, he'll always have a contract, right? But I want to know, from your perspective, we know how old he is, obviously. We know how limited he is in the ring, though. But if he gets squashed by Roman Reigns, does he have any other value of putting somebody else over? What do you guys think? No, he ain't like. I, that's why I was sitting there thinking it may not really be too much of a squash match, but he need to have somebody just may still make him look stronger, still make him be Goldberg still. So he has to be able to still look somewhat dominant. Like I said, Usos probably come out, or like I said, Roman probably cheat, do the low blow thing. Who knows? But like I say, anything could still happen. But I just still say ten minutes for this match. <laughs> I mean, it's a safe bet there. Yeah. I mean, again, uh, yeah, you don't want to see him get squashed. Although WB likes to, you know, they well, love to and... feed their champions, yeah. bro. They love to, be... yeah. but they could just have Goldberg face a guy like they did back in summer. Somebody took on Ziggler and just squash him and get the win back and stuff like that. So I, I really don't think it really would hurt Goldberg. We we know what to expect. This is all, this is a Roman Reigns show. You know, this is, this is his time. And I, I just think win or lose, uh, well, I mean, depending on how the match goes, I think there's still uh, money to be made with Goldberg in Saudi Arabia, especially uh, there. Um, again, uh, so we got Roman retaining. Yeah, we all I going think we all, to Mania as a Universal Champion. Yeah, we we do. And and then also now we've got talk about nostalgia. Lita's coming back. She gets the shot at the Raw Women's Championship. Takes on Becky Lynch. Listen, I, we know that she had her chance to go to AEW. She she still feels that a, that WWE is a place to to be at. She gets the shot against Becky Lynch in Saudi Arabia. Again, though, I just don't see uh, Lita coming out victorious. Uh, she has I, I, does she have one last run? Maybe, but I just don't think it it happens anywhere uh, near WrestleMania time though. And I think that we get Becky Lynch uh, and Bianca Belair at Mania. I just think this is a an attraction match. Stop you right there, Jeff. You're right, right. it's an attraction match, but. Are we going to run to the same scenario now with Becky Lynch? I mean, we talked about who's going to be the surprise entrance in the women's elimination chamber match, right? I said Asuka. Um, we said Lacey Evans. People said Bianca Belair was going to win. Didn't really worry about who's the surprise entrance, right? Are we building Becky up enough where it's going to be really impossible in a situation similar to Roman Reigns of, like, who can possibly beat her? If it's not a legend like Lita, who else is it going to be? Do we run to that problem? Ooh, ooh, you on the road today. <laughs> you on the road. But yeah. I'm always on the roll. That's why they call me the trendsetter. <laughs> right it's like, yeah. Like, you got a good, like, you got a compelling point right there. Like, if, if Lita can't take it, who can't, like you said, you're going to build her up to be some person, even though, like, a lot of her, like, last victory has been cheating, grabbing the ropes, is that the third, beating Charlotte, grabbing the ropes, and beating uh, uh, Sasha and Bianca, grabbing the ropes. So it's like, um, yeah, I feel like, like I said, like we know the storyline. We know that uh, Lita isn't going to win, but you're going to sit here and make it make her look too tough, and then the, the next person is going to have to really carry that torch to see how good they can be. And I feel like Bianca can do that because, like, they still build her up. Like, she's the strongest, the baddest, fastest, whatever <laughs> S she is. Oh, he's using that moniker. Yeah, he's using yeah. the ST out of everything. Oh. The baddest, the strongest, the quickest. <laughs> She's the EST, right? She's the EST. Yeah. Like I said, she like she for sure could fit that mold and be the person that could be that next top person to elevate it. Like I said, she was she did great well, to me, in my opinion, as the SmackDown champion. A few with Bailey, a few with Sasha. Like I said, it, it was pretty. It was goddamn good until uh, Becky came and ruined everything. <laughs> so talking about the when you're building champions and making them so dominant. It really is tough then to bring someone up and coming to have any validity that they can challenge a champion. Just your thoughts on that, on that way that WWE builds their stars. 
it's like I said, it's just it's just crazy. Right. I said like the fact is like all right, when last time that Brock was like dominant, Seth came and slayed the beast. Uh also you can make a compelling argument that he was slaying Roman until that happened. Until <laughs> until he had to end up getting disqualified. But like I said, Seth's probably the only star, but he ain't no mega star. Like I ain't gonna say or say like he ain't on a level like his on Roman as far as making the stuff universally known. So yeah, outside you be outside Seth, like I said, go Brock. Like I said, Drew had his turn, mm -hmm. but like, but that still could be a project. But <laughs> you gotta get better competition. It's kind of hard and difficult, especially with the yeah. men, with the women. Like, like how you said Bailey. Like I said, Bailey and Becky never really had a few, and that would be that would be something new and good. They never really had a feud against each other, yeah. and like that would be unique and something different. Uh, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to say. Like, yeah, who can really make take the top spot from these people? It's kind of difficult. See, that's why some of the releases that they made kind of are head scratchers, right? Because you go from having a roster where you have a, a lot of people that are available to even just feed these guys, right? Mm -hmm. And you decide to make these roster cuts because you think it's better for, you know, the bottom dollar, which is money-wise in WWE. But then it's a budget you, thing, guys. It's a budget thing. It's a budget thing, pal. Sorry about that. You know, you get the uh, Johnny Ace call, but, you know, at the end of the day, how productive is it when you have a situation where, like, there can only be a certain handful of people that can compete, you know, for that spot because WWE makes it believable and they don't give anyone else a chance? I mean, there's so many people on that roster that, you know, Cesaro, man, basically signed a deal where he knew he was going to get a WrestleMania push, and then that was it. After that, look at the difference a year makes. Look at his road to WrestleMania last year compared to the, does he have a road is there an andre the giant memorial battle royal that there's going to be this year i mean I so. it's just crazy he signed away basically for three five years just for that one wrestlemania win against Seth. <laughs> i mean it's crazy yeah. <laughs> and it was worth it <laughs> it was because, and, and honestly like for example let's bring up sasha real quick too that's another thing too she signed an extension knowing that she was going to be basically not happy. And Cesaro did the same thing. I love Cesaro. I think there's so much more they can do with him. So many opportunities he could have been given uh, that maybe who knows he failed, but at the same time has shown that he is a great worker, can tell a great story in the ring. But ultimately, he signed his fate. He knew what he was getting. Now, like, hey, if he doesn't like it, he can go back to catering. Yeah, but, they're, they're, but they're not doing anything to Sasha. Like, Sasha's on a higher echelon, though, than, yeah. than Cesaro. Though so she, I don't think, okay, higher echelon, but where is she right now going into WrestleMania? But I think she Nowhere. does have, I think she's, a, I think she will have a spot though compared to a guy like Cesaro. I think her spot will, you know, there will be a spot for her at Mania, right, King? You, you, there's got to be a spot for her, yeah, of course. But like, like he said, with Cesaro, like that was head scratch. Like I said, he, he had his Mania moment, he won, he even went against Roman Reigns. So I thought that he was still gonna go in the right direction. He had this little face off with Brock, and I thought that's probably gonna lead off into something, but no, but uh. Yeah, like I'm thinking about the people like Cesaro. I'm thinking about the people like Finn Balor. Oh. I'm a big Finn Balor fan. And it looks like just because Vince don't like him, some reason he just got him in catering and losing to people like Austin Theory. Even though I like someone like Austin Theory, but it's just like it's he couldn't be in the Rumble. Yeah, like, he couldn't have a spot in the Rumble. Are you serious? <laughs> Is he not in the doghouse, Finn Balor now with Vince McMahon? That he couldn't be in the Rumble at all. Cesaro and Finn, both of them didn't even smell the Rumble. That's, it's crazy. <laughs> he had he had people like Shane McMahon and Bad Bunny, <laughs> even though yeah. like is like a good performer. But come on now, like Finn was the Universal Champion, or was the Intercontinental Champion, like IWGP, <laughs> like NXT Champion. Like, yeah, but as we know, Shane, in the world of Vince McMahon or Shane McMahon, that that doesn't matter what you've done outside of Shane WWE. McMahon was this whole different story that night, guys. <laughs> 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 That is a WWE 24-7, if I've ever seen right there. Yeah, Shane never McMahon. happened. What the, hell, <laughs> what the hell happened at the Royal Rumble? Uh, all right, so now we go to the Men's Elimination Chamber match. Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley. That's all you had to say, Brock, Brock Lesnar. Le <laughs> Bobby it. Lashley, the chamber, defending his WWE Championship against Brock Lesnar, Austin Theory, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, uh, Matt Riddle. This is a, a very star-studded 
uh, match here for the WWE Championship, which a lot of people beforehand were saying how it's the WWE Championship has kind of been devalued because with the whole Brock Roman storyline, they felt that you know everything was about the Universal Title and that the WWE Championship was kind of diminished. I think that this is a pretty big spotlight on the WWE Championship. Uh, we'll give King Cole, uh, uh, King the uh, the shot here to give his prediction on this matchup. Bobby Lashley, I love Bobby Lashley, man. Got his big win at the Rumble. What are your thoughts? Who's walking away the WWE Champion uh, heading to WrestleMania? We already know Brock is going to win. <laughs> I hope he loses, but like like uh, I said last week, if he win and they unify these titles, they need to unify it and then have a title sitting right there like so they could sit there and present it to them, the person that wins. They're going to do this. They don't need to unify these titles. They don't need to have a title for titles. Too much, like I said, they need to have the Raw. My sleep horse is Lashley probably retaining or Seth end up winning. And like, yeah, but I just, like, we know Brock is going to win. I just want to see the dramatic form that he wins. Do he come in number one, beat up everybody as they come in? Do he come in last and just do the set of uh, Shayna Baszler a few years ago and just eliminate everybody as she go? We don't know. I'm just curious how it's going to be. I just want it to be entertaining. I really hope Bobby Lashley win. Like, I want anybody else to win but Brock, for, ironic, for, for some funny reason. I hope they all. Them and then they all pin them and then get them out early. <laughs> yeah. Makes a lot of sense. I just, again, I can't see Brock not winning. I can't see it title for title. I know Vince kind of didn't want it to be title for title, right? But I think, uh, I think Brock and Paul kind of pushed Vince to this because I think you got to make, you got to, you got to put butts in the seats at, at Jerry World, right? You got to do it. I think that's the biggest match you can, you can make. The biggest stakes, you got to put it there title for title. I mean, what a way to solidify one's legacy for either Brock or Roman to walk away a double champion on that night. I think, again, a lot of people will be talking about it, even though it's the hundredth time we've seen it. Uh, the stakes can't be higher than probably on day night two of WrestleMania. So I, I think Brock's going to walk away the WWE champion. And it's unfortunate for, for, for Bobby Lashley, but he got his win at the Rumble, I guess. And we're going to see uh, Brock and, and Roman Reigns. No offense, but screw Bobby Lashley. What I, what I feel is an <laughs> offense to is guys like Riddle. Uh, maybe guys like AJ is in his last run, most likely. You know, you know, he's done great work. When You know, I kind of had little feelings that he might win the Royal Rumble when he came in as number one. Uh -huh. And then, you know, you could still see that he has a lot still left in him in this last run he has in the WWE. Um, and, and just it feels bad because it, like even Seth, you know, I feel what's going to happen with Seth. He's doing some of this great work. The build up he had with Roman was great, but now he's going to take a back seat because, like you said, and like what King said too, like this is all being built up. We can figure it out, guys. We can kind of put the pieces together what they're trying to do here, of uh, you know building up towards Roman and Brock again, which we've seen now. Plenty of times with a different dynamic now because now we're seeing Brock as the face, Roman as the heel, and now title for title. And like Jeff said too, what's better way to promote a fighter to build off a card that you're going to have to fill in that stadium? Are they all going to wear masks? I have no idea, but they're going to try to fill in that stadium as much as possible. Mandate or not, uh, and that's the best way of doing it right now. Honestly, it's like it was what we talked about with the Intercontinental Championship. What we talked about with the tag team titles. What we talked about from a pure wrestling standpoint. We've seen this before. We always want to see who the next guy is, and the scenario is going to be that who's going to win that match. We can debate that at a later time because this is all about elimination chamber. But man, that if that doesn't put seats in the arena. I don't know what will. Exactly. What's in the arena? What's in the seats? Right. Yeah, that's what. Right, dessert, yeah. <laughs> well, no, they might have taken some seats out because of COVID, you know, you know social distancing uh, and stuff like that. They can put more seats in there to fill in that <laughs> building. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, I mean, this is probably a, a really easy pay-per-view or, or premium live event to dissect here. Yeah, pay-per-views don't exist anymore. Yeah, and, and, yeah RIP uh, the pay-per-view. But, again, though, like, your fandom, dude, man, like, so the days uh, of Bobby Hinn saying, call your local cable provider and say, yeah, I want to be part yeah. of Elimination Chamber. They're gone. There are no way when a hundred members anymore. They are, <laughs> but not for, for wrestling. Well, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The hotline, right? The hotline. But uh, your fan, though, I mean, I've seen, uh, you know, I've, I follow you on social media. I've seen you, you know, hit the live events. I've seen you, uh, you know, your AEW guy, too, as well. You love wrestling. Um, so just in closing here with the, my as far as on my end with the questions is, you know, with the AEW fans and the WWE fans, like you said, there's 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 wrestling everywhere. What are you gonna What do you say to people that like 
want this to be like another war like we had in the Attitude Era that like just need to like if you're an AEW fan, you, you, you downplay whatever W does, vice versa. What do you say to those fans? Because social media is so freaking toxic, dude. Like, if you're holding the TNT Championship, dude, someone will say, oh, man, you know, AEW, Dar- Darby Allen, or they'll, 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 they'll judge you, whatever like that. But what do you say to those fans that want that war that just doesn't, to me and my eyes, doesn't exist? All the time. Shut up and just enjoy wrestling. <laughs> that about it. Just enjoy it. Like I said, like I said earlier, it's just so much wrestling going on. If you don't like 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 it on Monday, go watch it on Wednesday. Go watch it on Friday. Like I said, like okay, so it's so it's so many more directions you can go. Watch it on Tuesday. See, watch it on Thursday. It's wrestling every day. It's, it's every rest, wrestling every day of the week. Sit here and enjoy it. Like I said, I got friends that's just strictly AEW, strictly AEW, and I got to hear this at the third. Then I sit here and watch it, and I'm like, I'm not non-biased on it. So I sit here and be like, if WWE did this. Y'all sit here and be booing it. Like the stuff that they was doing with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks and everything, where they dressed up in their little get up and everything and had a, a, a Halloween costume match. I said, WWE did this. Y'all, y'all, you was booing it out of, out, of, out of the room, but now it's okay when they're doing this or vice versa. So I was just like, man, just sit here and enjoy the rest and stop complaining. Because now, now, now some people just being biased because they hate WWE so much. I was just like, just, just enjoy, enjoy wrestling. It's a good time right now. Yeah, you're completely right, Jeff. Stop complaining. I'm so sick and tired of hearing your bitching. It's 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 really hurting my ears. Okay, well, so well, please stop. Complaining. Stop I'm doing enjoying it. Yeah, you man. are. You're complaining. I- you're a complainer <laughs> since the beginning. We did this podcast, dude. You have no idea. I got to deal with this guy every single week, complaining oh. about this and that and this and that. Oh, and then when he comes on the show, oh hey, you know we're gonna preview Elimination Chamber. Like it's all bright and and bushy tailed Whatever. All right, I don't believe it. It's it's all a work. It's a gimmick, guys. Bushy tail. Am I a rabbit or something? Like, <laughs> sometimes you, you are. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> in this light, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, but, 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 but what, what I want to ask you, King, I'm making myself See, laugh. See, he's here. making himself laugh. Yeah, well, you have uh, to because he's not the only doing one who thinks he's funny. You know? Yeah, exactly. Of course. Well, <laughs> you know, I'm the trendsetter. Everyone else would agree besides you, Jeff, because you're not that. I was given that title for a reason. Okay? He was, he was given that title, too. So. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, Jeff, I'll give credit where credit is due. You do a so so job so um but with elimination I'll, chamber coming I'll, I'll up i'll take though, that acknowledgement i'll take that acknowledgement yes enjoy it because this is the last one you're gonna have <laughs> but um when we talk about everything here jeff brought up the point to you king about you know is there a war is there not a war and you know you said you know people shut up and enjoy it too and we talked about it earlier during this discussion how great it is to be a wrestling fan or just a fan of pro wrestling or sports entertainment we're going to call it at this time in our lives when it comes to scenario of the forbidden doors we all talked about, right? And we're, we're hearing glimpses of like before you would never hear one person acknowledge the other, another company acknowledge the other. This Royal Rumble, Mickey James was in there. She's the Impact Women's Champion, and they promoted it as that. That was the first glimpse that I could ever remember besides have them taking their shots at AW. Events or the WWE actually acknowledging, you know, the whole Roman Reigns thing now, another company. So should we expect now, it makes smart business sense that could there down the road ever be a scenario where AEW and WWE or WWE and the other company work together? You'll see their stars on their show and their stars on your show. Not an invasion angle, but, you know, kind of build it up because right now, if we're looking at it, that's the world we're living in now. We're, we're not at the point where we don't, we don't recognize the other side of it. We can now see behind the curtain. Do you think that's going to be eventually down the road in the future, maybe the next five years where all these promotions are working together in some capacity? This is why I sit here and say this statement right here. Like I said, I tell anybody to shut up and enjoy wrestling because maybe I'm just blind to this, but I'm going to say it. I don't care. I sit here and say it every day if I have to. I feel that this WWE and AEW is a big work. I feel everything is a work. <laughs> Tony Khan and Vince McMahon is working together to get get all of this and get more money than one of them end up buying it with the other company out. But the fact is, I guess, I feel like people, they, they, everybody's going to end up working together. Like I said, I was at the Royal Rumble when Mickey James came out. Huge pop. The crowd went nuts. I went nuts. I was happy. Ah! That's her impact theme music. Big country. You know, she yeah. came into that music. It wasn't the Mickey James the theme you know. song was her theme song. Yeah, so I, I went nuts. Like I said, like when that when that dropped and she walked out with this and she was holding that title proudly, patting it. I was like, I was nuts in there. Like, oh man, this is crazy. But I feel like yeah, everybody's going to end up working with like they go, everybody can work with one another. Like Jay White just said it the other day, even though he's not really 
like he bounces from everywhere. But he said, I could be I'll be in, I could see me being in WWE in the foreseeable future. So is he gonna sit here and break a forbidden door to come into WWE to do something? Who knows? Like I said, like everybody just could work with each other. Everybody should work with each other and just keep putting each other over. Good wrestling is good. You bring it forbidden people in and it's like it still brings more money. And everybody wins in that avenue. <laughs> And obviously, uh, I agree with that. There is some points that conspiracy theory that are on point there, Ken Coley, because you can honestly say and make a valid point that there could be an idea where they are working together. You know, it's it it's quite possibly. Uh, you're right. You know what I mean? It, there, I can't sit here and say like, oh, that makes absolutely no sense. That doesn't work. I mean, supposedly there's reports saying that they were warning. Tony Khan that, hey, be careful with Shane because he's a little bit, you know, not, yeah, you know, nothing, you know, there's like something wrong right there, you know? Yeah. So you never know. Yeah, like, why would you give them a warning on Shane McMahon if they were going to go into they, They've worked and, together. They've had yeah. Jericho come on Stone Cold Podcast. And, and so I, I think that, you know, that conspiracy theory, that belief, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, fault you for thinking that because there's a lot of uh, points that you can make that there is a relationship where they are working together. So hopefully they do down the road do something because that would be great for the wrestling fan, right? It's about the wrestling fan because they're the ones that put their money and invest uh, in this product. And we love this product, man. We just want to see it uh, be as great as it can be. Uh, can One final it? thing, guys. Okay. When it, it's not in. if, but when it happens, when Chris Jericho comes back to the WWE, <laughs> does he come back to break the walls down? Or Judas. Ooh, that's hard. You gotta come with Judas. You gotta come with Judas. It's too hot right now. You gotta come with Judas. And everybody in WWE starts singing it. <laughs> uh definitely. There's no doubt about that. And and you know, from the standpoint of like how you mentioned that there is this door that has been opened. Ultimately, kind of like how you said it, right? Shut up and enjoy it. At the same point, we should just enjoy it and and really just be excited about the possibilities that could possibly be out there. Because if this was back during the, you know, Monday night wars, no way this would ever happen. No way because they're all out for each other. They're all going after each other. And so back to your point, when you said, you know, guys just set up and enjoy it. My closing statement to that would be, it's like, listen, there is no benefit to a war. The business that we enjoy that you love as a kid growing up, as I've loved as a kid growing up does not benefit when you try to put somebody else out of business. Is, can there be competition? Is there a competition to being the number one uh, entity? Yeah, of course. But you don't want the other person to suffer because at the end of the day, look what happened when WCW went out of business, right? After that, and WWE was the last, the only commodity out there. I mean, yeah, there are other smaller promotions. I think TNA or TNA Impact or not, Total Nonstop Action Wrestling was the thing before it became Impact. Um, but again, like you don't have any places for these these individuals to hone their craft so why would we want one company to go out of business because it benefits all of us it benefits the wrestlers or the performers it benefits the promoters and more importantly aren't we the ones paying all their salaries because we're buying tickets to go to these events too and it benefits us because to your to your extent and how i describe it too it's like hey this is my version of baskin robbins right yeah 31 flavors if i don't like vanilla if i don't like wwe i got 30 other flavors I can try, whether it be, like you said, Impact, New Japan, MLW. You know, hopefully Ring of Honor does come back. I think they had some pretty good stuff there and could be better down the road if they decide to come back. I mean, it just, it was a, a laundry list of things to do. We should enjoy it too, but also, doesn't it just benefit us, King? Mm -hmm. It should just benefit us. Like I said, it should benefit us. Everybody sit here and just get together, enjoy it, have a good time. Like you said, 31 flavors. That's the best one. That's the best <laughs> analogy I've heard. Like I said, every, go anywhere to get a little dose of everything and just, exactly. it's just like, have a good time. Like I said, like you, you can't do it with football or like, <laughs> you, like you got to sit here and wait, wait for CFL to start up. <laughs> XFL is supposed to be going <laughs> rejuvenated. Like, like, Please rock. Bring back the XFL. I need some oh, more football, man. Oh, he threw it in was the going 31 to flavors, didn't he? It was going to work. He threw in the Baskin Robbins reference. I didn't throw it in, Jeff. It works. You know it. Everyone <laughs> believes it this. Works, it up. It's not a surprise. It says, oh, I never thought of it that way. So, you know I, what? Give me the credit. That was perfect. That, like I said, that was the best. Like, yeah, I loved it. I love it. Don't don't be surprised if you don't hear me start saying it. I'll post. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And definitely, uh, you're you gonna steal my gimmick. What's going on? 
<laughs> you steal my stuff? Come on, you can't steal my moveset. What are you talking about? You That's go, just me. You, 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 go live, uh, you go live on IG on Tuesday, so definitely uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out that you don't use that Baskin-Robbins nah, reference. That's right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> go live. I love to have you on there every Tuesday. Talk to me, baby. King Coley. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. We'll we'll definitely be on board. Uh, In closing, I saw The Rock during the Super Bowl. I loved it. It was awesome. Got hyped for it even more. I just wanted them to play a game. By the time we got to game time, I was just just let's play this game. All I thought about is next year, L.A., The Rock, and Roman Reigns, which is probably would be the greatest main WrestleMania main event of all time. Does that need a title for that match to to take place? Do you think? No. 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 Doesn't need a title, right? But they're going to put a title in there, but they don't need a title. Uh, <laughs> uh, is that what you thought, too, when you saw The Rock there? You're thinking, man, SoFi, L.A., next year. Yeah. It's destined. We got to get Roman Reigns in The Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Like I said, I actually got, like I said, I, I, The Rock is one of my favorites. So mm-hmm. I got very excited when I seen that. And I, I really just want him to hit us if you smell what The Rock is cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, brother. I think they would have to pay extra for that. I'm sorry, but yeah, that's why that's probably why we didn't get it. But uh, right. dude, amazing. Looking forward to Elimination Chamber, believe it or not. Although we kind of poofed on a little things there, but still, it's kind of great to see the fact that all these storylines that have happened for God knows how long now are finally coming to an end point, which is Dallas, Texas, and WrestleMania. But we got to go through Saudi Arabia, which is a weird map. That's a, that's a, it's crazy a weird detour, world man. map to go to. Detour in Saudi Arabia to go to Dallas. I don't want that flight at all. If that flight ever happens to me, forget about it. <laughs> Just leave me in Chicago. I'm not coming back. <laughs> no way, uh, dude. So for you're from Detroit. You're gonna you're gonna make the trek to Dallas because you you know you like traveling a lot. You just said you've been to a lot of shows. Uh, any plans on on making the trek down to Dallas? I'm sitting over here, that's the plan as of now to hit hit up Dallas. Uh, oh yeah, then you definitely definitely, definitely need to, to, to meet up, up, man, and and get a beer or a, or I don't know if you're straight yes. edge. Maybe we'll have a a a, 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 we'll you know. have a beer. We're gonna. Have- <laughs> first awesome. round's on Jeff. The first round's on me. Uh, obviously, uh, I I'll pick up the tab, dude. Man, appreciate it. He is King Coley. Follow him on IG and Twitter. Uh, he goes on Instagram lives on Tuesdays. Definitely check that out. He is the founder of Title Tuesdays. Check that out. Macho Man uh, fan through and through. That's how I became a fan too. So let me close on this. All right. <clears throat> King Coley, I see the lust in your eyes, brother. <laughs> the lust in those eyes, I see it, brother. And let me tell you something. If I see you in Dallas, Texas, oh, yeah, you know there's going to be a problem there. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do the hands. You got to do those hands, too, man. I see those glasses. You little pukester. You <laughs> Nothing to me. Look to your left. And you look to the right. My two madness is gonna run wild. Ooh, yeah, I dig it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude. And only, only us. You know, anybody else has watched this? Like, you guys are completely out of your minds. But you know what? It makes sense to us. Damn it. You know what? Because it's still real to us. <laughs> Listen, man, thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Uh, Limiting Chambers is this Saturday at noon. Enjoy it. We're on the road to WrestleMania, and we thank King Coley for hopping aboard on this amazing ride. Dude, we'll see you in Texas, and thanks for being on the show, my friend. Talk to me, baby. Appreciate you.